Okay, boys and girls, my name is Mike Kelly, and uh, you probably know me from my channel, hopefully, or maybe around the forums. Anyway, I wanted to show you the latest uh, change I've made to my blender routine to allow you to port, import basically almost anything in from uh, Daz into iClone. Um, as, as I've talked about in the past, and everybody knows, 3D Exchange 7 and, and all previous versions have always been a 32-bit program and there's really no way around that uh, <clears throat> so until unless and until they release a 64-bit program version uh, we're always going to have memory limitations and those memory limitations nearly always I, I hesitate to say always because I'm sure there's going to be some cases in which that's not true but I've never found one to be true uh, they nearly always or always end up being a problem with uh, the maps, the image maps that are assigned here. Now I want you to show you right up here, if you look here, this has right here almost two million faces in it. And it imports into 3D Exchange. So you figure, hey, you know, two million faces, almost, <laughs> if you can get two million, and I've actually done even three million uh, faces imported just fine. However, if you have even the slightest bit of textures, uh, that that you're trying to import, you're going to find that you just don't get anywhere. Um, you're going to crash. You're going to get not enough memory. And I'm not even going to show you that error because I'm sure you've seen that error, and that's why you'd be interested in my routine. Uh, so I'm going to load this scene. I should, probably should have started off with this scene in Daz. Uh, I'm going to load this. This is this fantasy uh, street. This is a hugely taxing scene. You can even tell by how long it's taking to load into. Uh, uh, Daz here, this environment, how big a scene it is, and of course by the fact, and so here, here it comes in, so we, we rotate around, you can see there's a lot of nice, nice textures, it looks beautiful, beautiful scene. Um, one thing you could do in here is you could use Texture Atlas and reduce all of these textures to a single UV and connect, and then some, but you're, you're going to lose a lot of abilities that way, and chief among them is you're going to lose the abilities to load in any of the roughness or bump mac textures when you actually bring them in the iClone. So I would not recommend doing that. That's uh, you can, but you can if you want. That's one solution. Uh, my solution is go ahead and export this as an FBX, just like you would do any other FBX. You can go in here, go ahead and F export it. Uh, in this particular case, I'll just I'm not going to redo this because I've already done it once. But I just wanted to show you these are the the settings for the export. These are exactly the same settings I use for. Uh, and the avatars too into CC3, Character Creator 3. Um, but anyway, you can see that there's just a ton of stuff here, props and things. So that's how I would export it. I would just go ahead and export that. Then in uh, Blender, I would go ahead and I'll drag Blender over here into this side here. I'm going ahead and, and import this in the Blender. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Import the FS. And again, you have to always un undo this use pre post rotation. That's the only thing you actually have to uncheck. And then you import it. And again, this is 45 megabytes. It's, it's going to take a while to load in here. It's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, but one of the reasons it <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is so big um, is, is all those textures that are in there. It's, it's just um, it's got a lot of textures. So, so it's loaded in, and ultimately, if you were to take that same um, file and try to load it in here, you would quickly run out of memory. And I'm not going to try that because of, because of a reason I'll show you shortly, but it, it does. It runs out of memory right away. Uh, and if you don't believe me, <laughs> I'm, sure you've, I'm sure you've seen that with your own routines. So, um, okay, so now it's loaded into Blender. So from Blender, what we want to do here is we want to uh, bring up my routines, and we want to go, you clear the folders first, and then you write the iPhone folder out. You click on this button. Again, I'm not going to do this because I've already done this, but you do that. It takes a little bit of time, not a lot of time. It's going to create the folders, and then once you've created the folders, then we want to go ahead and uh, run this replace all maps. What does this do exactly? Well, I'm going to show you. So if we go into one of these buildings here, let's say we go to this building here, this actual shape of this building. We go to one of the textures, and you notice it's got all these maps loaded in for all these various materials. So if we click on one of these materials and go here, you'll see that there is an image file. There's the source of that image file down here. 
So with all of these images coming in, that's going to soak up all that memory and be, make it impossible to load in the iCloud. So what we do is we go replace all maps. And what this does is it basically zeroes out all of those maps. So now the image is gone. Okay, so we go back here to any of these things, all the maps are gone. And, and if you're clever, you might be saying, well, Mike, <laughs> you just killed all my maps. Yes, I did. Well, hang in there. Uh, so now we're going to export this. We're going to go ahead and file, export as FBX. And you want to, well, one thing you have to do is you go up to Armature and take off the add leaf bones. You always have to do that. And then you go to export. Now, one thing too, if you export it this way, which you can do, that's fine. Um, it, the scale is going to be just ginormously off. You can reduce this down to point, uh, actually you reduce, yes, down to point one, actually point zero one is what you'd have to do. And you'd also have to change the uh, this uh, Z forward axis thing. But I don't generally do this. I don't worry about this. I just bring it into Exchange as it is. So we would export it as my, my FBS and export them. I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. And I loaded it into Exchange. And the reason I'm, I'm not showing you all this is it took a freaking long amount of time to load it. Matter of fact, it took so long to load this ginormous set in, I was positive it wouldn't work. Uh, but it did. It took maybe a half hour, I don't know, something like that. And I have a very fast machine. <clears throat> so those of you with a slower machine, I have a Titan card on this thing with 12 gigabytes. Uh, those of you with, with less, you know, you may, might want to go out and, I don't know, take the morning off and come back if you have a huge one. But the important point is it did load in. That's, uh, it was able to load in. And, and so now I went to, and then we're going to go. So I've got iClone running in the background here. So we're going to go ahead and apply that to iClone. Okay. You can save it out if you want, but I always just like to apply these things. Then it just loads it into iClone. Okay. And there it is. And you might say, oh, see, it doesn't take up much of it. It's still got all those faces, all those triangles, but it doesn't take up much video memory. Now, However, if you're, if you're looking at this, you might go, well, Mike, yeah, but all the textures are gone. <laughs> well, that's why we wrote out all those textures in that file. Because what we want to do now is we want to go to here, and we want to load in the textures into all this. I, sh I should say one thing parenthetically. When, when you save the file in Blender, you should name it exactly the same as it is in this FBX portion here. So it says Fantastic Street. That should be the name of your FBX file as you save it out. The reason for that is that when it comes into the scene, it, it has to say Fantastic Street here. Well, you notice it doesn't say that. So I'm going to edit this. And you might be saying, well, why am I doing this? Uh, that's because that's how, the, how uh, Real Illusion wants your, um, your, your texture folders to look like. They have to start off with the name of that. It's just a thing. Don't worry about it if you don't want to think about it. So load all object textures, and then Fantastic Street Root, that's the one that my, my uh, plugin produced. It produces a lot of other uh, things too, but you can ignore those for now. They're, some of them are for the avatars. Some of them are, are just uh, for your own uh, edification, texture maps. This is all the maps that are going to be in there. Uh, but in any case, you don't worry about it. So we say that, and what it's going to do now is it's going to load in all of the textures, not just the ones we cleared out, because if you remember from my previous videos, this also finds all the textures, all the roughness maps and the bump maps and the speculars and all those things that it really needed to be in this scene. It's going to track those down uh, from the DAS folder, because it's very smart. <laughs> and, and I'm not, although I was, I was a little smart in, in making it do all this. Um, and so once it finishes, and you notice it takes a while because it's a freaking amount of textures to load in, which is why it doesn't get through the 32-bit uh, 3D exchange program. And now once it does, well, all the textures are loaded in. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as good as it does in DAS. Why is that? Okay, well, there's one, one additional problem. And this is one I can't program around. I think it's actually a bug in iClone. I put it into the feedback tracker. Hopefully someday they'll fix this. But notice all the diffuses come in at 80%. Uh, this has been written about for years, and I, I don't know what to do about it. Uh, like I say, I can't program around it. I can't make those textures come in any stronger. But yeah, So you'll have to at least do that. You'll have to go through and bump up all the things that have, uh, that have textures to 80%. So that... That'll take a bit of time, you know, it's, but it's, it's certainly better. It certainly gets your stuff all into uh, to, um, um, 
high clone without worrying about the uh, the amount of memory. You notice, look at the memory. See, it bumped up. So we loaded four gigs worth of textures. So those four gigs worth of textures was why 3D Exchange couldn't handle it. I'm sure someday uh, they will release 3D Exchange 8. And at that time, I am positive it'll be a 64-bit program. And at that time, I'm pretty sure I won't be alive. So, so those of you that are still alive and can enjoy it, hey, there you go, you'll have it. But in the meantime, you can use my routine and, uh, and at least get your stuff in. So uh, thanks. All right, if you have any questions, oh, and by the way, so you can probably notice, see, I brought in the metallic and the roughness maps and the, and the normals and stuff. Uh, my routine will correctly find all those. It just won't, it, it just can't, I can't bump up the, uh, the diffuse properly at 80%. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep working on that. If I ever do fix that or, or, or if they ever do fix that, I'll let you know in another video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.